The Last Unicorn is indeed a good book. This is my third time reading it, and it just has these little moments that hit me, like I think, like, Bible, like, uh, verses (laughs) hit some people. Yeah, yeah. It's got a lot going on in there. There's a lot, there's a lot click clacking around in that thing. And it's all just, everyone's afraid to die. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's... (laughs) Is that what is that what it's about? Yeah. I've never read it. Yep. It's um it's all just memento the fuck out of that Mori, dude. Mm-hmm. Huh. I mean, it's about the last unicorn. Yeah, it's about an ever living being. I don't know, should I spoil it? I don't think I should spoil it for Chad. Should I? Um yeah, I mean it's a it's a fairy tale. It's about yeah. uh it's about a unicorn who uh hears that she's the last unicorn on earth and goes out to investigate whether or not that's true. Mm-hmm. Did you revisit this book, Kevin, because of our last episode where we became unicorns? I, it wasn't because of our last uh, unicorn uh, books, although those made me curious about unicorn fiction beyond just Peter S. Beagle. Mm. Uh, yeah, and I, I think I, I think I'm holding unicorns in a place in my heart similar to where dwarves are. Oh, wow, that's pretty. That's pretty deep. Are you clearing a chamber out? Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm liking. I'm I'm capable of liking several things. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think a dwarf would ride a unicorn? No, <laughs> they'd hang out with them though. Yeah, they yeah. would certain. They would certainly stand next to them. Riding a unicorn seems a little sacrilegious. Yeah. Unless you're like a young girl, but see that's the thing. Why? Why do? Why do uh, gender norm women get unicorns? Why? Do well, they dwarves get don't really ride anything. No, I guess that's true. Yeah, I think they you they, think they would have come around to something. It's funny how in like Warcraft and in the Hobbit movies, like the the massive goat is shown to be the steed of choice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. For dwarves, they have to give them something. But I feel like canonically they're natural born sprinters so they just yeah. kind of they just kind of run i feel like but yeah. sometimes you don't want to run sometimes you want to like take it easy i think in that case a dwarf may commandeer some sort of vehicle sure okay yeah. i feel like they dig like yeah yeah you just dig through <laughs> dig all the way like straight line it yeah or like, or, or minecart done some redstone yeah <laughs> i've been thinking about it's funny you bring up like a, a new love affair, a new chamber of the heart being open to unicorns. There's a fantastical creature that I also love, which I think, guys, may be having a moment and I didn't realize it. I have yeah. always loved brownies, the uh, tiny creatures that live in your kitchen. Um, yeah. And Do you e- mean the little people? Yeah. What, they're, what like, the they're like little tiny uh, elves, kind of. Yeah. Or maybe gnomes. I don't know. Something along those lines. They're like kind of furry too, right? In In some depictions. Yeah, they they got kind of a a wide berth. I think probably their one of their most famous representations would be in the movie Willow. Ah, okay. Uh, when they they're the little, the little guys that make fun of uh, Mad Mardigan and call him a daikini. The, <laughs> those are those are some delightful brownies, and I've always thought they were really funny little guys. Uh, and I've mm. been really I've been wanting to do what you're doing, Kevin, which is find them in in literature and find books about them. I doubt there are books about brownies. We can see, but the Cleveland. MFing Browns just <laughs> unveiled their new mascot. And guess what? what he is? His name is Brownie the Elf. And he is a brownie. 100%. He's an elf? He's, well, he's not an elf. He, I mean, he's an elf because I think they couldn't call him a brownie because people would be like, what the fuck's a brownie? But he is 100% a brownie, like the creature. Oh, yeah. Here, I'll show you. He's like, got elfin ears and everything. Yeah, I'm looking him up. Wow, look at this weirdo. He's so cute. He is so cute. And I love him. <laughs> what and... a weird sp- what a weird mascot for them. That's like really old school and weird. I kind of love this. Yeah, I and the Browns are the worst team and always have been. <laughs> <laughs> the Browns are famously bad and now I cheer for the Browns. In terms of terrifying mascots, you know, mm-hmm. there's like, oh, the Eagles, they'll they'll, they'll scratch out your eyes yeah. and the Bears, the this is like the Cleveland Browns. They'll come into your cupboard at night and take your sugar i do love i do love how like housebound uh brownies are as a concept yeah they have no place on a football field well maybe uh, maybe they are in the <laughs> maybe they are in the arena's larder perhaps hanging out it maybe they are fed voluminous amounts of lard and fat uh so that they are uh <laughs> they are good-willed and good-natured towards the home team browns and then they go and perform their brownie antics upon the visiting team. You know, I could I could see like maybe anytime there's sort of a 
a freak play or an accident or someone gets injured on the game, you're like, oh, that was the Brownie. The Brownies like, do that. Like Aaron, like Aaron Rodgers, you know, is out now for the season after the first game, first run. Brownie the Elf did it. Brownie did it. <laughs> you zoomed in on his little ankle, Brownie was there with his little knife going, yeah! This is like, stabbed just just jumping on it and stabbing away. <laughs> <Just> sli- <laughs> slice the ACL, yeah. Uh, now, Brownie the Elf did exist when the team was created. So, but I mean, here's why I think it's interesting, right? They probably had a little bit of remnants of brownie lore in the in those times, you know. Like it's like it's like Ohio, right? That's a that's a that's a white English town, if if there ever was one, you know. <laughs> yeah. So or maybe a little maybe a little Irish as well. It also looks like at some point they had a dog mascot called Chomps. And not as cool <laughs> as Brownie. <laughs> Sorry, Chomps. I'm weirdly digging like the brownie like mascot outfit as well. He's cool. He's got like yeah. sock shoes. Yep. Uh, and he's got a little tuft of hair that comes out of the front of his cap, his brownie cap. I mean, it is admittedly just a Keebler elf. Like yes. I'm looking at a yes. Keebler yeah. elf. The football is too small for him to be the right size, but it's still that he's holding. Well, they made him a little tiny football. Chair. Oh, they made him a little <laughs> tiny football. Yeah. Okay. He would be really <laughs> upset if they didn't make him a little tiny football. <laughs> You would cut all of your ACLs. <laughs> there would be not an ACL left on the team if he didn't get a little <laughs> just, tiny football. Just all, everyone just, them all flapping up like a windshade uh, <laughs> on everyone's legs. Oh, terrible. Oh, so <laughs> that's it. That sounds disgusting. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at a picture of him interacting with the, like, the dog mascot for Cleveland Browns. Like, it's a, a, a changing of the guard. He whispered, like, <laughs> he whispered into his ear, like, your days are numbered, dog. Man. He said the old words and the dog ceased to exist. <laughs> One day we'll all meet our replacements that way. <laughs> the dog the dog has just been walking around its ears ringing and not hearing any words spoken to it <laughs> since it heard the words. He let Chomps just, just wander off into the wilderness. Yeah. Uh, you know what? You brought up the Keebler Elves. I just want to talk about that real quick. They're brownies, right? Like, they're not, they're not like, hmm. we, we refer to them as elves because I think it is a uh a nomenclature that anyone could understand from a marketing perspective but he is brownie the elf for that same reason but he is a brownie and so are the i think the keebler elves are also brownies because they're tiny little elves and they live in a they live in a kitchen and they're very good at cooking so are you saying any food based elf is a brownie uh any kitchen based like as as uh as kevin said any kitchen based uh, creature is a yeah, we're well, not bitch, not any kitchen based creature, but they are a kitchen based creature. Yeah, they're, they're, they have a household quality to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, this this is for Chad. Uh, Keebler is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Welcome to Goosebuds. My name is Kevin. <laughs> I'm I'm Paul. <laughs> I I'm Chad. Today we began uh, the first step of our journey towards uh, a new a new Goose Bumps universe. Uh, we read we read horror the first Horrorland book, Revenge of the Living Dummy, published in two thousand and eight by uh, uh, R. L. Stein Corporation. Uh, Corporation. Um, <laughs> I'm pulling it up to see who really published this one. It's got to be Scholastic, right? Yeah, Scholastic's on the cover. Yeah, this um, this was th- this was testing. It was okay. Yeah, all right, all right. Well, let's let's lay the groundwork for why this yeah. was testing. And and again to hype everyone up because they should be excited. It's not just an entire series about Horrorland, arguably one of the best books in the series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, it's, about, it's got Slappy, their flagship monster. Can it really be called one of the best books in the series if it's done this to us? <laughs> well, okay. Um, is, mm. is like is ho- the original Halloween still good even if all the other Halloweens have happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I, no. And like, I think the Horrorland portion of this book was the best part. It honestly, I wish, I honestly wish he had started with that part. Yeah, I don't understand why we have two thirds of a book plus another third of a different. We book. will seriously need to discuss that by the end of this. That's. <laughs> Yes, yeah. there's some. Okay, so like, there are 18 of these books coming at okay. us. Okay, not 19. I'm sorry, 19. Oh God. <laughs> purportedly, <laughs> purportedly, they have a continuous story throughout them. Um, yeah, a sort of. Okay, maybe if he if he commits to that. If yeah, he commits to that, we'll say. <laughs> he's 
skims up halfway through. We're leaving Horrorland. It's 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 Camp Werewolf now. I will not be surprised. Uh, <laughs> it, it, here's the thing. This book is how many slappy books are we in now? How many? I thought we- this was the seventh one. Let me see. I'm looking. Yeah, I'm looking at the thing. There's. There's been a lot of them. We should maybe do research before we start this podcast. Uh, no. <laughs> That's not why people enjoy this podcast. <laughs> no. They're not here for the scholarly critique. So there's Night of the Living Dummy, Night of the Living Dummy 2. Mm-hmm. He has a small mention in Escape from the Carnival of Horrors. I don't think that counts. No, that doesn't okay. count. Night of the Living Dummy 3. Yep. All right. Uh, Bride of the Living Dummy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Four. Slappy's Nightmare, which was the last one we read, which was awful. That was five. So this is six. Okay. So, yeah. and here's why I'm mad. Okay, I'd love I'd love to know. Among countless other reasons in this hellish existence, I'm mad because <laughs> because Slappy, uh, he's been here. We've been here. We've done this, and now we're in book one of a new paradigm. Two thousand and eight. It has been about a decade since the last books. Maybe not a decade. At least been a couple of years since the last book came out. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a fresh start. He's had some time to re to re- recoup and recover. <laughs> <laughs> to think about what Slappy can do. <laughs> to think about what he can do. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that though. It does, does it? not because <laughs> think, literally think about what you do before you come out here. <laughs> <laughs> Have a plan. Do your research, Slappy. <laughs> <laughs> Junkie. Uh, yeah. He he does not provide us with <laughs> any new moments in this book. This, well, okay, okay. Defend he, it, Kevin. He doesn't. He isn't offering us anything new. There are no, no new morsels in here. But as far as moments, like there is a shift because we are in 2008 currently. Right. So yes. Yes. cell phones exist when they are convenient to exist. Definitely, I have 100 percent thought about that. I was like, what happened to that cell phone? That was yeah, there? yeah. Facebook exists if it wants yeah. to exist. Yeah. Do you mean Face Place? Face Place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Manga fucking comics exist. Manga comics <laughs> exist, yeah. <laughs> I think RL's ever read a manga? Not to distract. It just, that seems a really important question. I think RL 100% does his research, and it's like, <laughs> what did the kids like? He's got, uh, probably at this point, uh, maybe niece and nephew, uh, or not niece and nephew, grandchildren maybe are giving him. I don't know how old his kids are, but like maybe his kids were into manga at this time who knows when you say do his research you mean walk through barnes and noble on the way to the goosebump books <laughs> to put them all over the store and then see what other kids are doing yes. and then leave that's how he can write it off as a tax write-off yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think perhaps his editor just gave him a list of things that the kids are that the children's now. like <laughs> i want to know well I, we, we'll get to the manga i just want i do really want to know we're gonna we're gonna theorize on what manga slappy was reading in 2008 when we get there I like One Piece. I think Gantz had just started, so maybe he was reading Gantz. <laughs> Isn't that super fucked up? Isn't that like weird I don't, sex horror? Gantz is like Battle Royale, right? I don't know. I actually never read Gantz. I just I looked up what manga what manga came out in that year, and that was one of them. My dad really likes Gantz. I'll ask him. Okay, please. I, Kevin, that's great because I thought Gantz was like a horny as hell manga, so that's awesome. Um, it's it, there's definitely a lot of butts in the anime, if I recall correctly. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. God, Kevin, your dad's so cool. <laughs> We're never gonna stop talking about it. I'll tell you this much: he's not re- he's not reading Solanine, which is a, a book that came out in 2008. That's for sure. Oh my God, Solanine's so good. Uh, you know what? Okay, I, I did look it up, and I think we don't have to go over this later now that we've done this, but uh, I looked it up. Slam Dunk was out. He's 100% reading Slam Dunk. <laughs> Slappy is a jock, without a doubt. If you guys haven't read Solanine, you really should read Solanine. I have not. Uh, I, I read it for Heart Cannon uh, a couple years ago with a uh, friend of the show, Calamity Carl. Hello, Carl. And uh, it, it's just, it's it's stuck with me uh a lot it's just a really depressing but good story yeah i own it and i'm i'm kind of you've talked about how depressing it is and i'm a little nervous to start it it's good it's gonna bum you out in the middle and then lift you up again okay then so, if it's cool if it lifts me back up that's okay yeah i, I didn't realize that was 2008 that's really interesting yeah but it definitely not not on our else radar i guess no so 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 Brittany crosby and her yeah. friend molly malloy, molly malloy. An amazing name Mm-hmm. I would say start this book off with one of our, I think, one of our best cold open chapters in Goosebumps. It's interesting. It's like a rainy night. They're they're, they're digging a hole in a grave. It may be slightly cliche, but at least it sets up a scene and a tone for the book. 
At least it does that. I really wish I I hadn't been reading uh, The Last Unicorn in between (laughs) this book. I'm finding it so (laughs) difficult to praise RL for even the faintest amount of storytelling. But yes, this at least got me asking questions, you know? Yeah. And and this is what I liked about the book. I'll, I'll give a thing that I liked about it. And I think it is a benefit to this idea that these books will build a world. I think for once, R.L. Stein was forced to make a character that he mm-hmm. knew he was going to have to keep going beyond the single book that he was pumping out for that month. Um, and because of that, I think Brittany is kind of funny and kind of cute. Like in like mm-hmm. a in like a like she's got like a cute little humor to her where she's got like a sarcasm and she's got like a she's got like a like a good little personality on her. She's kind of intelligent. She's emotionally <laughs> available. <laughs> she's good. <laughs> Uh, I did not see anything unique to Brittany than any other protagonist, but I will give Brittany more of a chance in future books. Brittany just strikes me as kind of dumb and like you don't think she. Her, I think I think she's got like an intelligence about her. I feel bad for her because her parents are horrible. <laughs> well, she's got classic. She's got a. Uh, we got to come up with like a a name for the like uh the like when you have goosebumps parents you know like a as if it were like some sort of like thing you could have yeah, like a like a, a yeah. phobia or a i don't know it's definitely a mark that'll follow you for the rest of your life for sure raised in a goosebumps parent household they are as bad as any goosebump parent we've encountered seeing the mention of a glass coffin was interesting and in early on and some inexplicable page filling raccoon description. The the raccoon thing was interesting. I was wondering if that yeah. was going to come back, but I think it was just there to put some cute little guys in. Yeah, oh, the raccoons are going by. They wonder what we're bearing. Oh, are they good? Are they going to intervene? Are they going to tell the animal police? No, they're going to keep moving past. It's a, it's a good dose of animal fear that I know RL loves to just just you know uh, non human creature slander. Now, if Brittany and Molly had had like a small dog with them, I'd be like, "Oh, be very careful! That raccoon might smart might attack your small dog." Mm-hmm. I, I I mostly love this uh, opening uh, chapter, and I do say love uh, because it is a <laughs> refuge. It is a refuge from the most terrible character. Oh my god! Oh my god! Uh. I've ever had to suffer through. I think uh, wow. in, in my two and a half years of reading Goosebumps books with you, Ethan is the worst character. Really? Yes. And I think he was so bad, RL drops him two-thirds of the way through the book and never looks back. (laughs) I I think why I didn't immediately love Brittany uh, as you did, Paul, is because she wouldn't beat Ethan to death. Why why do you guys hate Ethan so much? I wrote this note. (laughs) I wrote this note, Chad, and I meant it. I wrote, I would kill Ethan and I would accept the consequences. (laughs) Wow! If I was also if I was also a child, because I don't think I don't, I don't think adults should be mean to children. But if I was also a child, I would beat Ethan to death with a hockey stick. Yeah, children can kill children, but adults can't kill children. <laughs> if I yeah, rules. if I could turn back time that once, I would yeah. use it to go back to child being, kill Ethan, and then st- Ethan. and then spend the rest of my life in jail. Yeah. He's Happily. like the same as like most no. book antagonists. I did not see where you guys are coming he from. He kicks people for fun. He burps he in their, their ear. Feet, he stomps on their feet. Oh. He is pure it's, annoyance. It's all too real, too, because I've known yes. I've known children yeah. of this oh. ilk. I've, I, I have known I have known Ethan. I'll tell you why Ethan won himself over to me. Because... He won you over? I can't I can't ch- tell if Chad is bidding as we have bit upon Chad in the past, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the entire book I was like, why are we writing this from Brittany's perspective? Get us to Ethan because Ethan's got the doll. It would make me so mad. <laughs> Ethan, Ethan's a, here's here's why I liked Ethan. Okay, <laughs> when Ethan, I think in one of the first couple of chapters, he kicks Brittany or Molly, and it's described that he does like a tap dance after stepping on their foot, and then like a little like shimmy shimmy like jazz hands thing and that's why you that's why you like him that's yeah he's why a showman you, that's why you like him. <laughs> i liked i like the bully that put a little extra like oomph into into his tormenting i was like oh this guy knows how to tap dance that's fun you're saying you like a beating and a show yeah yeah Chad, I, I respect the hell out of the bit. <laughs> I know it's not a bit. It's like it's like it makes it more of the Joker than than like a Bane. Great, you know, great bit, Chad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Chad. In, in order for me to continue associating with you, that is a fantastic bit. <laughs> 
Excited to hear how this bit. This is a fictional character. Excited to hear how this bit evolves throughout the episode, Chad. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. It is, he is a. Uh... No, don't say any. Don't say anything nice about him. No, he he's meant to be hated. He is meant to be despised, and yeah, I, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. It, um, as far as far as those type of characters go, I found Ethan slightly more interesting than the usual ones. But that's about it. They definitely they definitely make him empathizable. So we should clarify who Ethan is to the to the listener who hasn't read. Uh, Brittany is our main character. What's her friend's name? Um, Molly Malloy. Molly Malloy. Malloy. It's just Molly Molly. That's right. Uh, he added an extra O into the last name. And Molly Malloy is like a famous person from. Is it from Ireland? Like a famous, like mythical person? Maybe no, what? no. They're a dancer. They were a dancer. They okay. still are a dancer. Oh, um, oh. The na- I knew the name was a name of a person who actually existed. Uh, it sounds like it could be a common name. Uh, anyways, uh, so Molly and Brittany are burying something in the first chapter of this book, and then we find out in ch- in the the first real chapter, chapter two, that Ethan is uh, Brittany's cousin, and he comes from a troubled family uh, that we never learn about. <laughs> yeah, uh, we know his parents are sick. His parents uh, are sick, but yeah. also hate him because he stinks. <laughs> 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 and uh, he has to live with, with Brittany's family for a couple of weeks. I assume Brittany meant that uh, Ethan's parents are sick in that they're totally radical and they don't want this uh, horrible child <laughs> weighing them down. They're too ill <laughs> <laughs> AKA cool as hell to care about yeah. this kid. Poor Ethan. Yeah. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Um, I do like all of the, uh, do I like this? I don't know. I did notice all of the, uh, <laughs> he tries to put this in more of a like kid lingo. There's a Chandler Bing level sarcasm yes. running through. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. There's a, uh, Ch- Chad, thank you for sending a picture of a Philadelphia restaurant called Molly Malloy's. Maybe that's why I recognize the name. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that Brittany is written a little older than uh, maybe a normal character. Like I read her as maybe like 14 or 15. She's, Stayed to be 12. Well, she seems older in the sense that she does have like a bit of a wit to her, even if it's not the most clever wit- witticisms or anything like that. But I do think that like she has like a couple lines that uh, I thought were, you know, just kind of like, uh, like, for instance, Ethan has a doll when he shows up and we know it's Slappy and yep. he introduces <laughs> Slappy as this is Mr. Bad Boy, Ethan said, oh. Mr. Bad Boy is my best friend. And she just responds, totally pitiful, I thought. And like, there's not, it's not the funniest line, but it is like kind of funny to imagine her thinking that. And then like when she sees the bad things happening at the dinner and she's laughing about them, instead of, I think in in past books, the kid would have gotten mad, but she laughs things off a lot more than the kids typically do, which I appreciated and I thought made her a little more likable than most of your sure. your protagonists. Can we talk about Mr. Bad Boy, by the way? Oh, we'll get that. <laughs> I guess we could just kind of skip to that. Uh, like other than well, other than the yeah. introduction of his family being sick, they talk about her mom who's clumsy. Uh, Brittany has a really weird descriptions of her mom throughout this, where she really talks about how good she looks in her clothes a lot, which I thought was really strange. Yeah, I. I just wrote down Brittany's got a hot mom. Like, yeah, she's got a hot mom. And it's funny because like it wasn't that I thought Brittany thought she was hot. It was just that I felt like RL was imagining someone very attractive in his mind. <laughs> <laughs> and he couldn't help himself but write it that way. Yeah, she's got a hot mom. I feel like RL was imagining what female relationships are like. And he's like, they probably just compliment each other on how hot they are. Yeah, they think about how hot <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you like yeah. I have a quote set aside here. Uh, this is Brittany looking at her mom, really feeling her. Uh, mom said, brushing off the front of her jeans, she wears tight designer jeans, and she looks pretty good in them. <laughs> that's kind of wild. <laughs> a weird yeah. sentence for a daughter to think of her mom. I mean, I guess you got that's fine. You know, like also I'm the mom sure. calls their dad what is it, blonde freak? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the blonde freak, and he loves it. Well, because he's got a hot wife, so he'll say whatever. He'll yeah. take whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's got nothing to prove. He is a freak. <laughs> he's like yeah. <laughs> Also, uh, I don't remember the quote, but I have a note here that apparently R.L. Doug, I think some, uh, Ethan's parents are philosophy professors, and he says something about them uh, not being attractive. And I was like, you don't think there's an attractive philosophy professor out there? Have you seen <laughs> Cheaty from The Good Place? That guy's hot as hell. Oh, my God. Oh my God yeah. Yeah. He took his shirt off and he was super ripped, yeah. surprising everyone. Don't. 
be dismissing the philosophy pro- professors, RL. It's just he was wearing glasses, and we didn't know. <laughs> that was the abs. problem. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's it. Oh my god, it is. It's about his, it's about so her mom. She's all that. That's right. It was yeah. it was her mom. She said he, he. She says that she wears glasses, which makes her look like a philosophy professor. Which, not the thing you think it is, RL. But yeah. under under that under that thirty six twenty four thirty six. <laughs> I, I, li- I like that Brittany is like I made a list of all of my good points. And one of them is I try to understand my friends. That's what I'm saying. She's emotionally intelligent and available. She's sure. she's sure. a good person. I like Brittany. She's going to get us through 18, 19 books of Horrorland. I don't think I've seen her actually trying to understand or succeeding in understanding her friends throughout this book. I think she talks about Molly at one point and she dis- she discusses like what Molly's kind of hang ups are, but she accepts them and she's OK and she works with them. And she tries to understand. She does not try to understand Ethan, though. She's done trying to understand no. Ethan. No. We all understand Ethan. <laughs> well, well, as soon as Ethan comes in with a doll named Mr. Bad Boy that tells you everything you need to know about Ethan. Mr. Bad Boy. So either either Ethan named the doll that we re- we understand is Slappy, but they haven't said it's Slappy yet. Either, yeah. we, either Ethan named it Mr. Bad Boy, which is, one, embarrassing. <laughs> I thought you'd be all about Mr. Bad Boy. <laughs> Mr. Bad Boy took me out every time it was said in this book. I could, whatever the opposite of horror is, I was removed from it and just kept picturing P. Diddy doing a little shrug dance. <laughs> <laughs> he was Mr. Bad Boy in the 90s. You're yeah, right. Yeah, well, because also, but, like, but again, he called himself Mr. Bad Boy, which made him not a bad boy. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> He's no he's no Chris Kirkpatrick from NSYNC. I'll say that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he had beef with Eminem. <laughs> um, or Slappy has already started to take control of Ethan, is how, which is how I was starting to assume mm-hmm. this relationship going. And that means Slappy told Ethan, call me Mr. Bad Boy, <laughs> which is even more embarrassing. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing <laughs> for everyone involved. Here's the thing. We do find out that Ethan named him Mr. Bad Boy. We are mis- massively misdirected to believe that Slappy called himself that. I think as a way to maybe make us question, has Slappy lost it? Is Slappy yeah. not with it as much as he used to well, be? Yeah, I was also cu- this entire this is not the first time I think that there's been a Slappy book where Slappy is introduced with a with like an alias. Yeah. As he- if Slappy is like hopping the country want- wanted and and has to change their name. What does the book and the story gain? From us as a reader, not knowing it's Slappy immediately. It is the number one sin that I think so many uh, (laughs) Goosebumps books indulge themselves in. And it is the sin of making the reader know more than the protagonist. And that happens in basically every one of these books. (laughs) It'll inevitably happen in any book where the title tells you everything you need to know (laughs) about the book. (laughs) Like The Last Unicorn, which ruined that book for me. (laughs) Does he think, does he like, does Arl think we're going to get to the point where we find out that Mr. Bad Boy is Slappy, like halfway through and go, oh my god, that's Slappy? And then like, he's on the cover. <laughs> Slappy's on the cover of this fucking book. We know who it is. I think it is a clever misdirect how we're led to believe that Ethan is being bullied by Slappy yes. into being terrible. Even though it's pretty clear that Ethan doesn't have to do all the shitty things he does. Right. I'm not going to say it's artfully done, but it caught me by surprise. <laughs> I was hoodwinked by this one. I will I will admit to having not seen the twist coming in this one. Sounds I, like a pretty good book. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we give this a full bump. Five bags of popcorn. Um, we haven't even talked about the most, I think what I think is the most interesting part of this entire book in the beginning is not su- slappy without saying slappy. It is not uh, emotionally intelligent Brittany. It is not <laughs> tap you. dancing bully Ethan. Yes. It is Molly Malloy, who I would say is much more the usual Goosebumps protagonist, uh-huh. because yes. Molly's uncle, her dad, or dad, has essentially like I, I kept thinking of the um, the people that uh, the Conjuring movies are based off of uh, yes. Ed and Lorraine, uh, where they yes. had like a like an attic filled with like spooky paranormal things and a possessed doll. If Mister Malloy like, handed you a business card, it would say "Dummy and Haunted Toy Specialist" on it. Yes. Yes. Which is cool. He's got a bunch of wild stuff from other countries, therefore they are scary. Um, <laughs> up in his attic. He's got stuff from Mumba. Mumba. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Molly had a shirt called Mumba Rules. Which, it's a, that's they, a funny shirt. That's honestly funny. That's I think yep. part, I like that joke. 
I th- I thought that was silly. Uh, I thought the Museum of the Weird was pretty silly. Yeah. And I think the Mind Stealer is awesome. Mind Stealer is cool as hell. Yeah, so we should explain this. this so this is a shrunken head doll. Yep. Yeah. Uh, presumably taken from its people and its culture. In Mumba, and brought yeah. Over to, mm-hmm. Yeah, from Mumba. Uh, it was taken by force. And placed in a super thick glass case like it's Magneto. <laughs> uh, so that it cannot escape. I figured that was so no one would touch it. Because if you touch it, it steals your mind. Well, yeah, that's probably the more important thing. I mean, he's Magneto, but you you have to turn yourself into metal and put yourself in front of him for it to work. Which is actually how Magneto got out in one of the movies. <laughs> is it? Yeah, somebody got dosed with extra iron in their blood <laughs> by Mystique, and then Magneto- Well, yeah, yeah, Mystique, Mystique dr- drugged him with a bunch of iron. Oh, he, he, yeah. sick. Magneto fatalities in them. It's pretty sick. That actually yeah. is, that's dope. Paul, have you not seen X2? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, Damn, I've I've seen it. That's the only scene I remember from it, and it was cool as hell. I definitely saw the first one, and then I think I saw the second one, and was like, "Well, done with these." What are you talking <laughs> about? It's the best one. Nightcrawler tries to kill the president. It's a fairly, know. it's a fairly tumultuous time. Those uh, those movies came out for America. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so in yeah, in the in this museum attic, uh, yeah, there's this this mind uh, stealer doll, and you might be going as a reader, go, huh? That's another doll in a book about a haunted doll. Mm. Mm. So we 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 get in there because <laughs> <laughs> it it's because it's uh, there it's because Ethan sucks, and they need to get out of the house, uh, yep. and and they yeah. it's. It's really like anything they can do to maybe reduce Ethan's annoyance powers, and that's like maybe we can move around and he'll get tired. Yeah, this was this was like insane to me that uh, basically Ethan bruises uh, Brittany with Mister Bad Boy immediately. Five seconds of him being upon there. Uh, the head, he yeah. bruises her, and and then he on the way while they're trying to wear him down through activity he is burping and trying to step on feet he is actively antagonistic at all moments yep he's terrible yep and so they bring they bring him to her house as an attempt to wear him out and that is when uh dad has just so happened to get home mr malloy he takes them up because he's got something really creepy to show them and it's the mind stealer um and then this great moment happens where uh Brittany is bending down to check it out. And then it, someone says, hey, baby, give me a kiss. And uh, she jumps and bangs her head. Another head hit occurs. Uh, yeah, yeah. And she screams, oh, no, my mind. I love, oh, no, my mind. I I also <laughs> really love, oh, no, my mind. And then, and then, but, okay, this happens at the end of chapter five. And then chapter six begins. And I just need to pull it up. Yep. Give me one second. I'm going to pull up chapter okay. six. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Instantly, she feels a buzz and she screams, oh, no, my mind. And then she yep. go- and then chapter seven begins. Whoa, wait, I heard the buzz again. My brain word. It took me so long to realize the doll wasn't buzzing. The sound came from my cell phone that I have that I'll forget to use later. Uh, yep. <laughs> so she lets out a sigh of relief. Never, we never talk about the fact that she smacked her head into something. She just kind of no. moves on from it. Very strange. And then it's just her mom's co- texting her. It's time to go home for dinner. Yeah, we should probably we should probably keep track, especially if she's our recurring character. How many head injuries that she takes? Certainly, she's got. <laughs> so we're on. T- we're on two. So Brittany misses having a room because Ethan is moving into Brittany's room. Uh, and Brittany's moving into the sewing room mm-hmm. for no, a- absolutely no reason. Her parents are just awful. And so Brittany's taking her stuff out of, uh, out of her old room, including a skull boy poster. It's fallout boy, right? <laughs> oh, how dare you? It is. No, it is. Though. It, no, it's, um, it's, uh, uh, my, my, chemical I was romance. thinking it could be my chemical huh. romance. I was think. I do think it's more based on Davy Havoc than it is on Peter Wayne. It's AFI. I, I kind of got an insane clown posse vibe from it just be, <laughs> just by the fact that one of the, the, the band leader's name is Buzzy. Buzzy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That No one in Fall Out Boy would have a dumb name like Buzzy. Uh, but but he... Um, <laughs> Patrick Stump is a serious name. <laughs> Fall Out Boy is just a Simpsons reference, so... <laughs> yeah, it's a sick reference. I think it's, I think it's probably... Here's what I think. It is an amalgamation. Definitely visually 
more Davy Havoc or My Chemical Romance, right? Sure. What's the name yeah. of the yeah, guy yeah, from yeah, My yeah. Chemical Romance? I don't remember his name anymore. G- Gerard, Gerard comic Way. writer, creator, Gerard Way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Gerard Way and Davy Havoc are kind of like the look because he's a dark boy with like with like tattoos and sleeveless yeah. shirts and stuff like that. But it has I. But I think the name Chad. I'm sorry to say it. I think the name is based off of Fallout Boy. Maybe I like I like Skullboy because it's um it's singular like no one in the band is is Skullboy yeah. they are Skullboy collective yeah yeah Buzzy is not well, Skullboy I was I, I was just thrown because there were sentences like uh Mister Bad Boy likes Skullboy like I was just like what is going on here boy it was just I don't know <laughs> boy uh and then I think Ethan it claims that because he wants the poster and so the the the, the, the fit, kids are fighting over the poster and he's like Mister Bad Boy. Buzzy is his favorite. I'm like, does Slappy have a crush on like Gerard Way? What is going on? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, got, I mean, I do too. He's got those yeah. eyes. <laughs> he created the Unbarrel Academy. That's pretty, and made the Black Parade. That's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> we we see a little glimpse of uh, Brittany's life and the things she values. We see a painting of her dead dog Phoebe. We we learn that there's a painterly aspect to Brittany, which I quite like. Uh, yes. That might yeah. be my favorite part of her personality. Is mm-hmm. I don't think we get a whole lot of creative Goosebumps characters. No, and this is another thing that made me endeared to her is that she has a painting of her dog that passed away, and she looks at it and she goes, "This is this reminds me of my beautiful dog that I loved." And she's a she's a likable character, guys. This is not a bit. I, I think she's a likable character. She's a. I do think that RL was like, "I'm gonna need to care about this kid." This, I'm gonna have to. I'm, I'm gonna have to care about this one for a couple books at least. So we're. Is gonna... it is it Brittany or Molly that's doing? I didn't think it was interesting. Their unique multimedia project. Molly had Molly is a very good painter. Molly's a talented painter. Well, one of, I can't remember if it was Molly, it was Molly or Brittany in our class is doing thing where they paint an like a planet, like an alien landscape, and then they cut out pictures of celebrities out of magazines. That I believe. Put them... I believe that is Brittany that is doing that one. That's pretty. That's that's a interesting. Yeah, mixed media art is all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. No, it's cool. Yeah. They're cool kids. Cool kids. Hope they don't die. <laughs> <laughs> I hoped I hoped Ethan would die. Me too. He well he disappears, which is as good as dying. It's weird that there's no punishment for Ethan because we know that he's even more fucked up than we believe him to be. Um <laughs> yes, the, what we learn about him <laughs> takes him the the little morsel of sympathy we are allowed to gain for Ethan in this book is destroyed at the turn. Of this yeah, book. he's a tap dancer. He's talented. <laughs> Brittany comes home to find her poster ripped in half, Buzzy's face removed, and also the 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 painting of her uh, dead dog has been defaced. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a signed poster. All of Skullboy had signed it. Yep. And uh, when she tries to snitch on Mister Bad Boy, uh, she's pushed down the stairs. And he says, "Don't ever snitch on me again." Yeah. Oh yeah, she f- she finds out that Mr. Bad Boy is sentient. <laughs> yeah, so the way she learns this is so he's doing the classic slappy stuff. Uh yeah. sitting on uh sitting on at Ethan's hand and cracking quack cracking wise at, at Brittany about her looks and her smells. And uh and then he he st- he I think he sits up at one point. Yeah, yeah. She goes upstairs to the attic yeah. looking for Ethan and is like Slappy just He's just laying there on the bed all seductively, his head on his pillow, just like hanging out. He he likes a good pillow, too. And he too. says, I am alive and I hate you, Brittany. <laughs> and then when she tries to tell on him, she gets pushed down the steps. And then she gets pushed down the steps, which is a, a rehash. He's pushed many children down the steps. Classic slappy prank. Classic slappy move. And then the book decides it wants to do something else now. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly we're dragged to Molly and her problems, and she's <laughs> like, I got a call from Mumba, and we gotta bury the mind stealer before it steals our minds. We gotta bury it in a human graveyard. Yep. And yep. so we go we find ourselves back at the beginning of the book with that teaser chapter where they're just burying the the, the mind stealer in a glass case in a graveyard, but now Ethan's showing up, and uh yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> But this is where this is where we think Slappy gets a good look at the the mind stealer. Yes, it is, and I, this is what this part drove me fucking nuts. I really hated Ethan. <laughs> uh, it, they're burying the mind stealer, a dangerous object, uh, according to many people in the book. And Ethan knows this. Yeah. Ethan is being 
terrorized, supposedly, by Mr. Bad Boy. Mr. Bad Boy is holding him hostage, making him take his cousin's posters and destroy them. He's being a real dick to everybody, including Ethan. Ethan should be sympathizing with the two people burying the mine stealer right now. But what's he doing? He's trying to step on fucking feet and trying to push people into the <laughs> hole while, while there are doll antics happening here. Fuck you, Ethan. It's fucked up, man. It's I hate him. Up. I hate I hate this universe. I hate that there's no shred of kindness or human decency in <laughs> Goosebumps. It just makes me it's, it, it just makes me sad. There's no hope for anyone in this world. No, no, there's no there's no there's no hope or light anywhere for anyone, monster or man. <laughs> So what happens next? So Ethan sucks. He bothers them while they're burying the mind stealer, but they bury it anyway, despite the nonsense that he puts he puts out into the world around them. Uh, yeah. And then I think this I don't remember what happens next. They is this the the um I think it's they go to the they pre they presage this earlier in the book that they're going to have to do. Oh yeah the the old the old folks home thing. I oh my god. Okay. That's right. Okay. First off, this happened before, right? Didn't they take Slappy to a, a retirement community, and he did a stand-up routine. I, I, I think I, you're thinking of one of the many like Slappy is on stage and ruining it for everybody. Th- yeah, yeah. This this time and this point in the book, I was like, I have read every one of these scenes. Yeah, already. He, yeah. like this. The scene has definitely happened in maybe a slightly different context. I could have sworn he went to another retirement community in one of the other five books that we've read about this character. Maybe he did not. The only saving grace of this scene is that the uh, the elderly people are ripping on Brittany, and it's pretty funny. Is that a saving grace, and is it funny, or is it just more that no one in this universe is worth anything? There is no <laughs> kindness and no and no gentleness and no understanding. It is that, and I am gr- I am grasping for anything, Kevin. <laughs> I was yeah. I mean, I understand that most old folks home in tenement is just like can you just go in and be there do any was was britney just showing off her paintings there was that what was it she was gonna give them like a like a lesson of some sort and like yeah, she was bob rossing she was yeah. like here's how you do oh, a sunset okay. just that makes more sense. Yeah. yeah yeah but i don't yeah. but i molly's a better painter i'm pretty sure like so i think they should have gotten molly to do this but i guess that they can only really get her so it's fine yeah it's okay. well, well, she's got the in with the with the senior center because her her great aunt's there. Yeah, her great her great aunt goes to uh, Sunset House, as this is called, which is dark, <laughs> a depressing <laughs> name for a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Slappy throws paint around. He yells at the old folks. You get it. He has a couple of insults that I that are pretty tame all things considered yeah you know old people smell and he says i'm a bad boy a lot he says I'm he says bad. i'm a bad boy but the old people are so incensed like, how do you think he says it i'm a bad boy <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's a good one that's a good one i th- i i can't even top that kevin i had this exact question i wanted to ask you guys i think it's i'm a bad boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of thinking it was like it was a little sing songy like that. I'll tell you, no matter how I heard it in my head, wasn't scary. Never scary. Never once is it scary. He says it a lot as he's being a bad boy in front of all the people. Here's the part of the book that absolutely incensed me, and at this point, I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> to close it, I would have loved to stop reading at this point. This is the ultimate goosebumps parent moment because yeah. we have just had a room full of witnesses watch Ethan be a shithead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Brittany's the one who pays and for it. And Brittany pays for it fully. It makes me want to die. I'm with you, Paul. <laughs> I I want to put on the clown makeup and be fun and dance around. <laughs> That's my that's my cloud laugh, <laughs> and and you know honk my shoes and like squirt something from a flower on my chest. <laughs> but god damn it, it it's <sighs> I I can't. It's just it, it's too much at this point. We got eighteen more of these ahead of us, and this is <laughs> this is it. This is what we get. Like just Fear Street was doing so well. I was like, oh man, this is fun. Yeah. Maybe Arl started to pick it up again. Oh no. I do think the writing is better in this one. I do think he does a little bit less of the things that I that I hated in the original Goosebumps series. Yeah. I think he was capable of writing better that than that since then. Uh because we saw it in Fear Street. 
But I think that what he did was he really chugged through those books and he did not really care. He just wanted to make... I've been really contemplating as I've been reading these. I'm like, wow, this is just... Like, we know this is a money-making scheme, but you really... (laughs) You really see it. And then, like, you get to this one and you're like, okay, maybe right now he is trying to put together... At the beginning of this, I'm like, maybe he's trying to put together a really, like, a well-written children's horror book here yeah but then yeah, but yeah, then yeah. but then i'm getting into it and i'm like no this is all the same shit it's just that he uh maybe wrote a little bit more maybe he did a couple more drafts for this one uh because the writing is better it's just it has less of the filler than he than he normally did i that's the only th- thing i will give this less filler not any more killer <laughs> no they're very very little killing <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i mean isn't isn't like the morality tale some kind of component of horror yeah you're supposed to, you're supposed to learn something. We don't learn anything in this book. Yeah, why why include a character as reprehensible as Ethan? I guess if everything's a joke to you, like like it is to RL f- like jovial Bob Stein, then <laughs> it's just I'm really feeling the nihilism Me in, too. The, in this more than in any other goosebumps. Me too. I I think that the horror land portion which I'm excited to get to because I will actually enjoy talking about it uh is the it, it, that's the wheelhouse. That's where he should be. If he wants to be nihilistic and he wants to not teach you anything with his tale, yeah, be funny, be goofy, make it all go. Yeah, yeah. Go. You got to go bigger than what you're doing. When you keep it too realistic like this, which, and I, I use that term very, very, uh, very loosely. Uh, yeah. But like it, when you're trying to be realistic like this, yeah, you need to give us something like, what are you trying to say to us? You know, like, what is the point of Ethan? What is the point of, of Brittany? Other than a vessel for your demented doll boy, your bad boy, yeah. to do yeah. stuff to. <laughs> Mr. Bad Boy. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I've been, I was thinking about this as I read it. And then, and where at this point in the story, I'm like, well, it's still, it's sloppy. Sloppy's got Ethan under control, right? Mm-hmm. So like, what is... And, and this is kind of goes back to some of the other books. Slappy doesn't have any morality or thematic things to him whatsoever. What do we What do we actually know about Slappy? One, he wants slaves. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, there is a vaguely uh, non-Western phrase that activates him, implying magic from another continent. Three, he's made of coffin wood. Yep, he's made of coffin wood. That's about it. And like, there's no. There's nowhere like, oh, he's he's trying to recreate the old days of a 1920s entertainment or like a like a weird Joker morality where as long as it's funny, it's OK to him or a, a hatred for children because children killed him. There's like nothing. Any goal. He has no goal other than like, yeah. you, like you said, Kevin, nihilism. It's just it's just he's, <laughs> he's a Joker. He wants to see the world burn, but he doesn't. And even the Joker has more of a. I think an outlook than than this guy does. I understand the Joker in the dark, yeah, more than what Slappy wants. Yeah, but but the Joker himself is a character. Slappy is a joke. He's a play on the Napoleon complex. It mm-hmm. is funny because Slappy is small, and yet he exerts his power in a in a way that does not fit his size. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yet, an entire generation of ours all swears that Slappy is absolutely terrifying. I only found him terrifying because I was truly scared of Chucky. And Slappy yeah. kind of looked like Chucky. I find right. the world in which this is set and the <laughs> and the the humans within it to be more terrifying than the monsters. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should move on past this moment to get out of this nihilism hole. We're in. <laughs> um, so uh, magic. Uh, we learn we learn from Molly <laughs> that uh, hey, get, you know you know how my dad said that he recognized uh, Mister Bad Boy. Well, guess what. Uh, he's a cursed doll. You're not going crazy. Look, here's all this information on him. And so they go and they look at, uh, Mr. Malloy's or Professor Malloy's files. And it's like, oh yeah, here's Slappy's backstory. It says he can be woken up or put to sleep. I didn't know. Has it always been the same phrase? Yeah. 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 But the phrase always wakes him up or puts him to sleep. You you speak it. Yeah. Yeah. But the, like, yeah, now the the phrase is just out there uh, with this phrase. And then they're like, great, let's go get him. So they go up to Brittany's former room to uh, <laughs> speak the phrase to deactivate Mr. Bad Boy, a.k.a. Slappy, and free everyone, Ethan included, from his tyranny. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and on their way, they, uh, they note the PlayStation discs and the manga and the uh, dirty clothes strewn about. Ethan's room 
Mm -hmm. and they speak the phrase and they're like that did it uh we've turned him off but guess what he was never turned on uh he's on he's been turned on now ethan must have been some kind of computer genius because he did computers to the puppet to make it say things <laughs> so ethan sucks ethan 100 percent sucks he's been torturing and and preying upon people's sympathy for him yep. uh he's, he's a total reprehensible piece of crap he never appears again in the book he's gone but also what a br- that's that's that is pretty strange but also what a brilliant young mind to be able to program uh remote control animatronics uh with 90s 2000 it's pretty it's technology. pretty incredible what he did is it incredible because in rl's world like a microchip can also hold memories of like human beings or whatever. <laughs> uh-huh. So like, I don't know what a microchip means in a Goosebumps book anymore. Like he just, he did his own kind of tech magic, I right. guess. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Ethan does computers and he put a microchip on the dummy and that's how it mm-hmm. talks. We learn all of this after. So she finds out that, uh, that the dummy has been Ethan's doing. And she and Molly's like, "What you gonna do?" And she's like, "I'm gonna get him." She gets real uh, Sicilian here. <laughs> she's like, "She's like, I'm gonna get him back when the time is right." <laughs> and so, uh, which I respect. Uh, and she goes to sleep and is awoke by Slappy uh, hitting her and doing the stuff that Slappy does. Um, and he, then uh, Slappy runs off, saying that he's going to go get the uh the mind stealer uh and for some reason she didn't have she doesn't grab the incantation she just decides to just run out the door after him uh she chases yeah. him all the way i all the way to the graveyard question for you guys how did slappy know where the head was buried no idea well was i think he might have been still conscious though like locked away when ethan took him to the the grave site while i don't think he digging. has him i don't think he has him when he's there i'm pretty sure I'm he's pretty just sure he does, i'm pretty sure he never puts him down i okay, you might be right but i th- i would like the cross cross reference that because i feel like he wasn't there <laughs> please put put it under the microscope i'm going to have to why, I'm why does he even want the mind taker to, to mind take mines <laughs> wants to amass and consolidate his power he's pretty well he's also he's also pretty ineffectual like uh britney is just kind of like no and throws him off so he's like (laughs) he's like oh okay well i guess i'll get a magical brain stealing gun (laughs) from (laughs) from out of the dirt (laughs) and then people will have to listen to me it's not even it's not even gonna you have to touch people with it right yeah like yeah yeah. have a slapping how about you just get a knife That'd be scary. How do you have a knife? You could also end people's minds by doing that, by touching people with a knife. But you can't knife Slappy to death. So he's got to find the instrument of his own demise or sure, something like sure, that. All right. Sure, I, I am at sure. the point. So Ethan shows up. Yep. He, he appears from behind the st- uh, tombstone and grabs her ankle and laughs and dances like a hyena. Very uh, a great reason to like him, Chad. I really glad. Uh, <laughs> uh, do hyenas dance? <laughs> in their uh in their mangled way that they move uh maybe you could consider that dancing uh, yeah, 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 yeah uh i do not believe he has the doll it is never mentioned that he has the doll that as far wait hold on the disgusting little doll dolls wouldn't no that's the it is never mentioned that he has the doll i huh? don't think he has maybe maybe magic dolls can sense other magic dolls okay that's fair that's you know what if uh computer chips can contain <laughs> memories of, of living beings yeah but let's do that yeah. that's fine well, I'm glad we put that one to bed because that would have really bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany knows that Slappy with the power to steal minds would be a bad thing for the universe in general. Yep. And heroically, she goes to stop Slappy uh, by wrestling the shit out of him in the rain in, mm-hmm. in, in, in a graveyard, uh, which is scary uh, because <laughs> it's a graveyard. Graveyards, are, yeah. You get it. It's, you know, because it's a graveyard. <laughs> Because dead people are there. Because dead people are there. Yep. Yep. You get it. And uh, there, she's holding, uh, she's holding Slappy over her head, about to, you know, break break him over her kneecap, when uh, she's caught in the brights of her parents, her terrible, horrible parents, <laughs> who show up and are like, "You're, what are you doing? Why are, why are you, uh, like wrestling with your, with your cousin Ethan's beautiful, uh, perfect doll? Why are you ruining this family?" And <laughs> This is exactly what they say. <laughs> She's like, "I'll be good. I just want to do one more thing." And she throws she throws Slappy at the mind stealer glass, breaking the mind stealer glass and touching Slappy to the mind stealer. 
Uh, and she's like, all right, now I'll be good. Uh, Slappy is, uh, I, I guess, mind stolen. Well, real quick, you don't, you don't, uh, you didn't mention the fact that her parents give her this talking to, and then she goes full fucking Lucha Libre and is like doing like back <laughs> moonsaults onto him and like absolutely obliterating the body of this doll before her parents, who just said that they were going to take her to the doctor tomorrow uh and she is just and she is going nuts on this thing and then she does touch it to the mind stealer but not before laying a smack down upon mr bad boy the doctor threat is so fucked up and i thought it was something we moved past in like goosebumps 2000 like, uh-huh like the fact yeah. that going to the doctor is something bad because we had like sensitive parents being like oh do you want us to take you to the doctor do you want that yeah like i thought we were kind of <laughs> beyond that all right, well, Arl's from an older generation where you just took anything that wasn't normal to the, to the doctor. Yeah, get, get, go get your head shrunk, you know? Yeah, so Slappy's defeated, we all agree. And that's it, that's it. <laughs> Pres- well, presu- yeah, presumably Slappy is, even though he doesn't, I would argue he does not have a mind. If anything, he's a small gelatinous goo thing that we saw in one previous book. Oh my god, he was like a little, like, slug man, wasn't he? He was like a little slug man at one point. His essence was a little slug thing, and... and- Sure, if you want to say biologically, it has a mind, a brain, sure, but that is now trapped in a shrunken head doll with up to 20 other people, according to to Molly's dad. Hana dolls ain't got no rights because they ain't got souls. She traps him in there, and he but but now and then emanating from the from the dried uh shrunken head, Slappy says, I'll be back, Brittany. And then Kevin, if you would like to do the honors. Uh, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then we enter horror land, guys. Finally, new new chapter reset, like new section starting chapter one of this new uh-huh. subsection with two thirds of the book behind us and a really kind of like slap together, uh, slapping not intended, <laughs> <laughs> totally intended. Now we're starting a new book that is the horror land portion of this book. Where is it? it? Here's my question. Did anything before this chapter one of Enter Horrorland actually happen? <laughs> Does it matter if any of the things no. that happened before this uh, happened? But, well, as we're reading this, I'm like, they, they got to get to Horrorland at some point. It's called Goosebumps <laughs> Horrorland. And I, I know. So I figured like, well, Slappy's going to run away and she's going to follow Slappy. And you're going to find out that he's going to Horrorland and he knew all about it. No. No. She just gets invited to Horrorland, I guess, after. Ethan is never talked about again. Nope. Yeah, he's gone. He's they, just, we don't know what happens to him or well, his sick Ethan, parents. Ethan got recruited by the CIA uh, and now does uh, spy Stop goals, trying so. to make Ethan cool, <laughs> Working for the CIA is not cool. Is not That's cool. not cool. But it would be cooler yeah. than anything Ethan has done, <laughs> which is not saying much. Yeah. Somehow, work, somehow working for the horrible CIA would make Ethan a cooler person. Yeah, That's how so. much There's I despise him. Makes him an interesting villain. I think I hate uh, Ethan more than the CIA. I think Ethan has done more damage to the global. <laughs> <I agree>. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> I'm going to send you some operations that we committed on foreign countries, and you're going to change your mind. Ethan has disrupted more governments worldwide than... <laughs> The CIA has. Yeah, I, I just I can't I can't get behind Ethan. But if the CIA is after Ethan, I, I'll support them. <laughs> Why don't you read Operation Condor? That'll that'll change your mind. <laughs> uh, well, I am looking for a new book. So there's a bottomless quicksand pit uh, advertised in Orlando. Incredible! It, multiple times it's mentioned. And a quicksand beach. Two like two mentions of quicksand right off the bat. And I I yeah. listener, imagine me reading this. I put my book down. I lowered my book down from my face, and I shifted my eyes from side to side. <laughs> That's what I did when I saw two mentions of quicksand that close to each other. <laughs> Long-time listeners, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. What's going know. on here? Book of Names listeners, you know. You know. Quicksand? Come on. Quicksand? If you're, it's real. If this is your first episode, you have to go back. Uh, now, I don't doubt that a uh, a corporation like Horrorland with tremendous resources could invent artificial quicksand yes 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 mm-hmm. thank you mm-hmm. thank you i'm not saying quicksand is impossible i'm saying it doesn't occur naturally of course in the, in the way we expect quicksand to be a natural sort of hazard but <laughs> <laughs> synthetic quicksand i think with what 
is displayed in Horrorland, they could create an artifice that does what you would expect Quicksand to do. Well, they can do incredible things at Horrorland, as we learn very quickly uh, as the parents, uh, mom and dad, drive uh, Brittany and Molly Malloy. Brittany has won free tickets to Horrorland out of nowhere, seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. And mom and dad have, are taking her and her best friend Molly uh, for a week's stay at the big, beautiful theme park. They show up and um, there are uh, they can do incredible things to speak of the quicksand. For instance, there are buzzards flying around in the sky and mom shields her eyes and looks up and she's like, are those buzzards? And dad, I think this is a great line. Dad laughed. They're probably animated robots or something very clever. And he just writes it off. And I, I want to say that, like, seeing a buzzard would be kind of like, even if it was at a place, would be kind of weird. But I'd be like, okay, I can explain that. But a flying robot in is... In 2008? Uh, in 2008 is <laughs> yeah. pretty incredible, Dad. A little more than very clever. So if, uh, if there's a flying <laughs> robot in 2008, it's probably going to drop a Hellfire missile on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the CIA. Um, so then, what, the whores light their luggage on fire, and then the parents are like, that must be some sort of complicated joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, and they do get their screams on file, which is kind of good. That's funny. I kind of perked up. I was like, is this going to be all right? It's okay. I'm telling you, this is kind of good. We get a sour taxi ride uh, mm -hmm. where they think they're going to crash, but they're not going to crash. It was all part of the ride, guys. It, you know, don't trust anything. I'm, I'm, uh, Brittany says, I'm not going to believe anything from here on out. Yep. It's all part of an incredibly complicated bit. Mm -hmm. It's Westworld. <laughs> we, we, have a, we have a weird interaction where uh, they're killing time before they check in at the, at the hotel. And uh, they get some frozen eyeballs. They get some frozen eyeballs. Kind of cute. They're just, you know, it's just Vanilla. ice cream. And yeah. then there's a uh, blood. They, is it? That was a blood. Uh... Bloodshot, Bloodshot, that's it. Yeah. And, and See, this is already so much more fun. It, it's because here's the thing. He's like having a good time. Everything's amped up. The horrors are kind of fun and kind of funny. Yeah. They're like people who work at a theme park and the things that they wish they could say. They're like the people that work at those mean restaurants, which I don't understand why you would ever go to. They're kind of like the mean yeah. restaurant people where they can be mean to you because that's part of the fun. Yeah, the hot dog place in Chicago where they yell at you. No yeah, I no think thanks. people go to the mean restaurants because niceness hurts uh, sometimes because like people have to be nice in that right. scenario. Mm -hmm. If you had, they have to be mean in that scenario. So you can always throw like shrug off whatever meanness because they have to be for their job. They work at a mean place. Right. And like, if you invert that, it's like, oh, at every, every place they're nice. That's not really kindness. That's just niceness. Yeah. So I get, I get conceptually why the mean restaurant exists, even though it's not something I would like to participate in. Totally. Just as I get that BDSM exists, and it's not really something right. I want to participate in. And that's what this. And that's what this is. Is like this is the, for people who want to be scared so fully because they want to believe that maybe maybe death is right around the corner. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> and we get like an we get like a weird interaction with madame doom a fortune teller mm -hmm. an animatronic fortune telling thing i thought britney would have her fill of uh animatronics and dolls and <laughs> yeah. stuff but uh -huh. she's like i love these things and it's like, not mentioned they never meant they, it throughout the it would be good to pay that off yeah like I, oh boy another one of these yeah, yeah there are uh eight chapters in this portion of the book uh, we'll get to the ending, and the, and the fi finally they pay off the stuff. But through seven of these chapters, not a word of Slappy and not a word of Ethan or anything that happened. They don't talk about the incident, the recent incident, or anything. <laughs> and she, for instance, Kevin, she goes to the fortune teller's booth of Ma of Madame Doom, mm -hmm. and Madame Doom sends her out a blank fortune card and says, "You don't have a future, Brittany." You would think. Th that, that would moment. evoke something yes. for you, yeah. given what you'd just gone through. <laughs> I just had to go through it, so you, uh, so can you at least talk about it? Because we, because we just had to go through that together, Brittany. <laughs> yeah, if I knew that magic dolls exist, I, I would not go to a horror themed <laughs> that too. Park. Yeah, she really, she really, I, she really rolls. I didn't think about because this is our sixth slappy book, but she really rolls with that re revelation. That Slappy's real both times when it's real and fake one, and just pretty pretty quick. She leans into it. Huh. I wonder if God's real. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, I've just been given a glimpse that there is some sort of uh, quantifiable human soul, and uh, <laughs> I guess I'll go to a theme park now. Um, we learn about <laughs> we do some more dumb shit. Uh, we briefly learn about La Resistance. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. that there's a group of horrors who are uh, plotting perhaps to overthrow Horrorland. Horrorland I, I, is, I love it. Horrorland's not as it seems. Kind of cool. There is a, uh, a missive to, to find the other park. A, yeah. a, myster yes. a mysterious little uh, a little nugget for us that that kind of wants us to like. There is another. There's another park somewhere. It's this yeah. stuff is all cool. Like, there's always the, a park. There's always a horror. There's always another park. <laughs> So it's always a lighthouse. God damn it. <laughs> um, it gets me every time. <laughs> but they're like, ah, oh, well, we already know not to believe anything. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, the hotel is called Stagger Inn, which is pretty good. Is yeah, pretty not bad. Good. It's not bad. I think it's all right for a spooky hotel as opposed to like bone hotel i like i don't know at least stagger in it's got kind of a it's be it's better than a tip than the typical puns we we're fed throughout this i'll say that yeah. much. i'm with you chad i like that too i'm i'm starting to see an entire fake world here it he, he's the, world building this makes it more interesting he yes. is world building and it's and it's he's not doing a bad job at it um uh, I, i'll be honest the hint that there is a horror resistance movement whether or not that's real or yet another red herring stretched across 18 mm, books mm, fair i dared i dared let my heart flutter with hope for a second that there might be a nuance to this world yeah this this uh this little eight chapter uh addendum at the end of this book postscript uh <laughs> it's so is, weird such a weird format it's so strange it, this is this is what the people kids who bought this book were probably expecting more. I think than well, I don't know. They wanted. To well, here's it. the thing. Like, I, let's try to read his intentions here. And the only thing I can read the intention of 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 doing the first portion of this book is to give you some empathy with Brittany and maybe with the rest of the family. The problem is, to Kevin's nihilistic point, there is <laughs> this book is in, entirely nihilistic, and you don't learn anything. And I. You don't. I don't think that Brittany learns anything, and even if she did, you, none of it is used in this new portion of the book. So why did we have it? Why didn't we just start with them and just build the character within the park? You know, if this had been somehow like by surviving Slappy, you have earned the right to go to Horrorland. If this Maybe, was like, oh, Chad, the resistance reaches out. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, sure. Yeah, yeah. You deal with horrors and monsters. We, we, we know because of our secret channels and like, and we're sending you an invite because we we need strong willed children or whatever. Yeah. But no, there's none of that. But if they if they summoned like a super group of all of the children that Slappy has menaced, led by like Jimmy O James as like the Nick Fury, <laughs> <laughs> like that would be that would be kind of funny. But yeah. I, maybe that'll happen. Anything no. could happen. Anything Let's be could realistic. Happen. Could happen. Let's be realistic. It's probably not. La Resistance could go nowhere. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, to speak to this horror land's resources, not only do they have, you know, buzzards and all of these things going on and the ability to make quicksand, <laughs> they do a thing where they burn all of your clothes. Yep. And then when you get to the hotel, you get all new clothes. Designer clothes. I wonder why. Hmm. I also wonder why, because I I don't know what he was doing with that, but they seem like really normal clothes is the other weird thing. Like, she puts on just, like, a cute sundress, and it's like, okay. Like, wouldn't they give you, like, monster, wouldn't they give you, like, your, uh, like, Kingdom Hearts, like, uh, Horrorland <laughs> outfit or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> the clothes that the clothes that are like a personification of your soul. It's it's objectification it be, of your soul. It would be way creepier if there was just one like set of clothes sized perfectly yeah. for each of them, and they're no. like wear this. <laughs> no, but instead you get a bunch of clothes that say Supreme on them. Makeover, 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 <laughs> makeover, 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 makeover. <laughs> and then mom and dad are gone, uh, and cell phones don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the and that's the book yep and oh and slappy they find the digital camera and slappy's on the camera that's it oh that's right they did find that so and then that so that's the thing and here's my my, my thinking for why slappy is, and and the events of the of the previous chapters in this book are not mentioned i think that rl knew that you'd figure out 
that Slappy was involved in this if you were thinking about him again throughout this. Yeah. That's what I that's what I, I mean, think. I mean, I in an intro, if he pays these off, these cl- these mysteries off, hats off to him. I have no idea how Slappy is involved right now. I don't know why Mr. Crosby has a picture of Slappy. Uh, like all of these things. I think Slappy took I, a I, selfie I, before. That's what I think. He like yeah. se- he, Slappy invented oh. Slappy invented the selfie. Uh, and in this moment, and and <laughs> and kidnapped her her parents as well. It's weird how. You know, we've come a long way as far as in like RL's writing career. He's got even more to work with now. And somehow he's still not allowed to fuck with time at all. Like uh-huh. what what if we put the Horrorland part first and it's like, oh shit, like you know, here we are in Horrorland. Like it starts with the Horrorland chapters. Like my only yeah. my only suggestion is we move the horror land to the first part, and then the rest of the other two thirds of the book is a flashback, and it's like, oh shit, Slappy stole uh, Britney's parents. Why would Slappy steal Britney's parents? Here's why. The funny thing is, he did do that by using the graveyard chapter up front, and then yeah. flipping back in time. He can do this. Yeah. He understands the concept, <laughs> but he just doesn't do it. It's downright maddening. It's just it, it it's like he thinks we don't have the RAM. To like have a question <laughs> in our heads, you know, to like hold, like yeah. to, to hold yeah, a yeah. question throughout a book. Yeah, like he he doesn't think that it is possible for a human to have an unanswered question in their head and to read a book. Yes, I wonder what he knows that I don't, because <laughs> I think that's possible. <laughs> but my life isn't. I'm not a successful author. <laughs> but you're not beauti- beautifully rich as he is. No. So what could I possibly know, Paul? Stop asking questions. <laughs> uh, I have one last thing that made me really angry in this book. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. I Before we ever learn of Ethan, like before we ever meet Ethan, we're told that he loves to kick. <laughs> Why was he not allowed to kick Slappy at one point and fuck him up with his with his powerful kicks? Oh yeah, with his, ta- his strong tap dancing I shoes, he could have just curb stomped we him. Could have yeah. if he could, he could have saved the day. He did nothing. He had no pur- purpose in the book other than to be like a front end misdirect. Give him, let him let him save the day with one really sick kick that sends uh, Slappy flying away from uh, Brittany so she can grab the mind stealer and throw it at him. What if Slappy got to torture Ethan and break him? Like what? <laughs> like that is what put Ethan on the straight and narrow. Just what if Slappy were to take Ethan to a CIA black site? <laughs> <laughs> like if we want, if we want to punish Ethan for his crimes, let's just introduce him to a bigger bully. Let's introduce him to a worse version of himself, right. which mm-hmm. would be Slappy. I, I guess there wasn't enough time to do that or something i just don't know why you make a character as reprehensible as ethan and say nothing about him but other than everything's just a joke and nothing matters is there any chance he comes back in this i i'm i'm fascinated how this is going to be a that's recurring true. series that's very true chad we do have to we sadly have to hold the question <laughs> hold the question in our minds <laughs> <laughs> that that has been asked by this book and yeah. hopefully the question will be answered one day because it's the next book is not a slappy book it'd be fascinating if somehow these were all slappies but actually maybe we're glad it's not <laughs> it is creep from the deep mm-hmm. and shows a like a eel monster thing and i am now braced myself for a bunch of unrelated stories and then a couple chapters at the end of and then those kids go to horror land that's what it will happen i am fairly positive when do they all like when do the avengers assemble uh, let's look at the book list right is there one called just like all the kids beat up slappy <laughs> god we can hope uh no i don't see well there is escape from horror land coming up so hmm. which is book 11 oh. which is book 11 so is that is that the okay. only one that references horror land in the title so there's that. There is one that looks like it's not really a book. It's called "Welcome to Horrorland: A Survival Guide." Um, well, that's a pre- yeah, it's a precursor book. I yeah, think. I think yeah. that was just ad copy for Horrorland. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is, there is uh, the one before it. The title is just "Help! We have strange powers." I, I feel you. This, I don't know. I, I see maybe two that could be no, just the one. It's in the middle. I don't. I have a feeling he's going to give up on this. <laughs> 
You don't think we're going to see the fruits of La Resistance? I don't think he's going to see this through. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I, I do. We do. We, we did hear from the fine folks on our Discord that the series does get good, but it does not start strong. Okay. Okay. Um, no. I didn't, well, it didn't see it. Didn't start strong. I didn't see those messages. I could have used the mo- the morale boost of those messages. I'm sorry, I didn't see them before I read this. But thank you, for, thank you for that information. I, I remember seeing uh, on on Discord, folks were talking about Horrorland and how the first couple are maybe a little rough. Okay, but eventually, okay. It, eventually, maybe something good and interesting and different comes out of that. Which... <laughs> that would be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You know, it's the hope that kills you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hold on to hope. Uh, I think that's been a Goosebuds. Uh, if you want to support this show uh, and get access to bonus Camp Goosebud episodes we do every month, our Discord and other cool stuff, you can go to patreon.com slash Goosebuds. Uh, your pledge supports the show, keeps the lights on, and uh, it's the reason why we are reading this next series. But we're also going to keep going back and forth between what? Fear Street? Yeah. Uh, some adventure books. Yeah. Uh, we maybe found an adventure book or two about a certain blue blur that I'm very excited to get into. <laughs> he's, uh, he's ready. <laughs> uh, but if you but if you want to read us to read a certain one first, your best way to do that is go to patreon.com slash Yeah, I think it's important to note that we found out about that Sonic adventure book through uh, our patrons talking about that in discord so yeah i yeah. i would say um over the last like couple of years the patrons have definitely uh influenced the direction of the show at multiple times with with recommendations there have been quite a number of books that we have been brought to our attention through that so you you join the patreon community and you and you gain power uh, yeah so if you want a little power in life <laughs> join it please and and we might say your name in a funny way yeah uh, I'd say like, uh, what else is going on? You guys like anything you want to share? You want to promote things you're excited about? Things you're things you're watching and liking right I now? I just want to promote Goosebuds. I think it's a good show, and uh, I think you should join us. Keep and, on uh, listening. Keep on listening, and maybe watch Continue Show. Yeah, sure, do that too. Chad, would you like to recommend anything? Well, after that, I mean, I don't know. Uh, no, you... Reservation Dogs is really good. Oh, I heard I like that's Reservation great. Dogs. I, I hear oh, it's nice. great. I gotta check that out. Prepare yourself for some emotional damage, y'all, as you watch it. But highly recommend Reservation Dogs. Okay. Okay. Cool. Nice. Uh, that's it. Uh, shall we? Shall we wrap this up? And we'll we'll see y'all next time. Yeah, sounds good. All right, guys. Uh, we'll see you then. Goodbye, bye, everybody. everybody. Bye. Love you. Love you. Bye. I love you. Goodbye. This episode of Goose Buds is brought to you by our wonderful Patreon supporters, including those venerable folks in the Book of Names. The Book of Names. Book of Names. Starting with Stefan Jive Turkey Kuwabara. Hollis Hornby. Lowbelly Hate Me. Nathan Dolezal. Mike Lanteri. Mickey C. Michael McDowell. Hey Josh Robb. Cameron Murphy Audio. Buddy Morrill. Mel Dipson. LK. Afshin. Dango Twist. Zentacles pours the cold water on the ice church floor. Yes. Oh shit, coldinate yes. it. Uh, yes, seal it up. Stealth Bates. Robert Moon. Jason Crooker. Miguel Pardo. John Keedy. Clay Castle. Calf. The Juggalobalist. Slink demands. <laughs> Redacted content. Slink, no more paranoia shop. It's not coming, but thank you. Gregory D. Warren. Cody Redfield. Alan Sailor. Bradford Golter. Aiden pledges their hammer to Dwarf Daddy Kevin. Thank you, Dwarven <laughs> Child. <laughs> <laughs> Jar Jar Slinks. Chosen One pledges his cadre of musketeers to House Kevin. Thank you, musketeer children. <laughs> Levi Thamp. <laughs> Up and champ. Jonas Engman. The John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Carl. Anthony Mulberry. Yanni Markovina. Elusive Koala. Drew Applegate. Christian Vanskiver. Brooke X. Jesus Christ. Jeremy Lowe. Brian Hobgood. Zach Connor. Patreon underscore donator comma yo. Joe Spooky Digital Ghost Tierney. Tom Whittem. Lord Cornwallis. Andrew Jadzik ventures a guess that Jeff Webb is not a baby anymore, but actually a toddler at this point. Oh my god, they grow up so fast. <laughs> Time moves faster in the podcast realm. I also think it's been two years. It's also been two years. You a, man, you a toddler now, boy. Murphy P. 
Jesus Christ, what is that mean? The Carson Birkenbean. <laughs> He's just a toddler now. Tevin Ticklebean disguises himself as a dwarf named Kevin Picklebean and pledges to Kevin for one month. Thank you for your support, Kevin Picklebean. <laughs> What happened to Tevin Ticklebean? He's got to be like a teenager by now. Yeah, I got old. Sean Minogue. Rushy Glenn. Alicia Grafe. Wiggle it! Luke LaFountaine. <laughs> Matt McClellan. Chip Handsome. Tanya Turtle. Juan Jalapena. Jonas Blatterman. Timothy Misa Dulakis. Keith Halcrow. Clay McCarty. Parker Lee. Ham underscore boat. The Crowfend, but seasonal. Ah, Raymond Hernandez. Matthew Sutton. Paul Grasso. Jeffrey Owen Cahi. Kelsey Kinneman. Joe, a regular name, Scott. <laughs> wow, you really flipped that one, Chad. That was incredibly regular. <laughs> it's, a, it's a writer term we call flip the script. Whoa. <laughs> Alex Moon, the robotic dog. Russell Kastberg. Xavier Jimenez. Scotty Pippen. Chris Putrakis. Dungeon Kappa. Tobias Clark. Zach Ware. Lip Duck. Ice Acolyte Hamster. A lot, of, a lot of pro ice people today. Luke Noodles. Zam Bambino. Melt That Wall. Meet Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh Bolin. Nathan Remick. Estimina, Lord of Paul's Pants. Need more kimchi. Chris, Hard Penis is Dead. Long Live Hard Penis, Nelson. <laughs> A hard penis for a season is still a hard penis. <laughs> <laughs> we'll miss it, but I'm glad I got to die with me. Streak. Reed Stubendick. Lee Wood. Tacky Tammy. Kieran McNamara. Joey Evans. Diet Soda. Lamb, the aspiring demon lord of friendship. Ooh. Cool. Jackie Ledoux. Coleman Laguza. Carewise Gamgee. Cameron Hansen. A wild swaggy Yolo squire appears. <laughs> A pair of Scots. Levi Kidder. David Gray. The Deadly Bulb. Matthew Brittato. Generally depressing. Bryce Diori. I am Cornholio. I need TP for my bunghole. Carb son, the son of Carb. <laughs> ben Bohan, the bow of Han. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. R.L. Slink is founding <gasps> Lava Church. All hail the great magma beast. Redact that name. That sounds cool. I think <laughs> Lava Church and Ice Cur Church could meet in the middle somewhere. What? Bony. Jonas and Evolson. Some of Chad's bird friends. We pledge our talons and sharpen beaks to Chad. Thank you. Scree. Joe Gorman. Burgers, blissful, anti-spiral, manifesting. Since the demon says trans rights, Anthony must know if the church is officially melting it or not. Answer carefully. I am confused by this question prompt. <laughs> Me too, actually. Uh, uh, the church is trans rights, and the church is not melting currently, but it could if we wanted to, but some of us don't want it. Oh, we almost got him in it. Oh, we almost had him loop, looped in into a loophole. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us have secret doubts that the other members of the church clergy don't know about. Ah, so close. Nicholas Maloney. Tiffany Lee. Germ Juice. Eric Horwitz. Calamity Carl. Thomas Jansis. Nick Johnson. Mutant Astronaut. Lucretia McEvil. Henry Torbert. Boner Guard, Epsilon, Hamilton, a.k.a. Hambone, host of Radio Bone Air. Ooh. I love it. I love it. Adam Knapp. Ryan Carroll. Jeremy Bowser. Logan Derby. Chick. Brad Schmelzer. Megan McCormick Mason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ninja Bread Man. Callum, Mr. Misfire West. Skeletorin. Mandy Nasty. Helodicus Frenchlin. I love that name every time. Aaron Lord. Yoplin. Dr. Chocula pledges every claw and fang under his command to Paul. Thank you, Chocolate Child. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Reynolds. Robot Arena. Nate Bit G. Mr. Unimportant wants to know if you can pee on the ice church floor. Only if your pee is cold. Huh. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, okay. What? I'm on board that. Yeah. Only Wait, if your no. Pee is cold. Wait, no, 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 no. Yes. Yep. Oh, nope. I forgot. I said it's in the diocese. I forgot where I stood. Shit. You blew it, Paul. <laughs> I don't stand on pee, so I, I don't want pee on our floor. Can I actually say, as someone who likes to build up the ice, I don't know about peeing on the ice church floor. That seems kind of gross. Have I, can I say that n nothing's more refreshing than uh, a Jamba Juice and an ice-cold pee? <laughs> Together? Or 
Yeah. yeah, you go back and forth. It's like having a smoothie and a coffee. I want to yeah. clarify, Kevin. Do you mean because you have a Jamba Juice, your pee is ice cold and therefore you have a nice cold sensation when you urinate? Or that you drink cold pee? So who's up next for names? <laughs> <laughs> Scott Wable? Ryan R. Davis. Rocco. Josh Howell no longer pledges his zealotry as it has been mocked. No zealotry for anyone. Come on, zealous, Josh. It's a zealous response in itself. Get over it, Josh. <laughs> And the siege. Give us the zealotry back. <laughs> we're back. We you. need it. We're so we're so sorry. We said no. To, we made fun of your zealot zealotness. Please, Josh. SSJ Trogdor. Ev Dog. Llama Lad. Mike Spaghetti Jones. Greg Musto. Sprinkle Buds. Hi, first time. Long time. Allie Rose. Chris. Hilda B. The discography of Blues Traveler and inhalation of skunkweed enhances Pauly Shore's piloting of the Gundam Sandrock. I'm going to have to look that one up. (laughs) I know all of the things referenced in this, but I don't understand why they're together. Suck it in your red tin tin. (laughs) Uh, Soggy newspapers. Liam Rogers. John W. Still thinking about that name. Dakota Kemp. Chris Kulik. Ali underscore sets. My cart. Keith the Great. Saturn video. Wade Norcross. G- Kiwi of Lerv. Gula Verb. Serial Killer X. <gasps> Cassandra Harris. That last name was my favorite. It's a cool name. Kira and Brian are big fans. <gasps> big Nick Lane. Kit. Bush. Blake Cavan. No longer having a bad time. Yeah, oh, we're, 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 our national nightmare is over. <laughs> See what I said. Dan Antonio. Each over the moon. Dennis Wright. Cameron Ganzevall. Several upset horses. Uh, oh, no. I hope they don't stamp the ice. Crash Callahan and the Voodoo Death Gun. Whoa. Whoa. Farrah. CM Crystal Maiden. <gasps> Matt Septor. <laughs> I hope, but let's get more single or double letter names so we can start coming up with what they are. Greg G- Gervasi. Vita Zen. Hopefully they're all Dota abbreviation. Jesse. Paul's Wang does its thing to Sonic's last golden ring. Tonight at 11. Dun-dun. Whoa, those are big rings. Those are big rings, Paul. I'm not saying anything. Cole Gleason. <laughs> Chris Curdo. B. Anthony Rodriguez. S. Slardar. <laughs> That's another Dota character. <laughs> oh, you're pulling out Dota character? I thought you made up that cool name. No, when you're in chat, in like in-game chat, you're like CM's mid. You'd like tell people that. Oh. Like Crystal Maine's mid. Michael Malloy. Jesse Boggs. Jeff Webb is still a big baby, but we both sincerely appreciate your well wishes. Grow up, Jeff Webb. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> In a good way. Whoa. Get big and strong, Jeff Webb. Alpaca acquaintance turns their cup anti-clockwise. Yes. Good. So it's, it's still going down. Turaku, the thing that goes doink in the anime. Doink, doink, doink. Kyle O'Neill. Spencer Y. Goonkos. <laughs> <laughs> Bjarn Deer. Wunderskin. Brought to you by 3M Corporation. Chris, <gasps> Soul Skater Byers. Brony Danza. Hold me closer, bro. Brony Danza. Anthony Stoker. Greb Comics. One. Wait. He's back. Wait, Wonderskins. Wonderskins back again. Two Wonderskins. It is a second skin. You put the other Wonderskin on top of your other Wonderskin, you're even more safe. <laughs> That's Wonderskin to the max, aka Max. Dog Lips underscore Kajoyan. Raylan, the youthful candy maker. <laughs> A.K.A. Cyber <Price. laughs> Talene Jones. Girthworm Jim. Blarbin pours orthogonally. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> this one's for Kevin. Babette's Feast 3, Revenge of the Gobble Ghoul. I mean, they really had to mix it up after where the plot of Babette's Feast 2 left everything, so the Gobble Ghoul was narratively Well, necessary. she did rise the Gobble Ghoul in 2, so <laughs> yeah. she, need, the, she had to face down with the Gobble Ghoul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. The, the payoff for the Gobble Ghoul really needed two movies in order to fully tell the story. Starship 9! Logan Kilgus. Oh, that's not me. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Boss Feratu, and then Paul goes. Smelodies. Proper Spaceman. Angelo. Edward. Longton. Dash. Santone. 
Fake and the Awkwardly Unseen. Caleb Snyder, Grand Master of Spells and Enchantments, pledges his wizard staff and ancient tome to Paul. But I need your skills. I don't know how to use your wizard staff and ancient tome, <laughs> Caleb Snyder. 3 a.m. sleep. Brought to you by 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Corporation? Yeah, 3 a.m. Corporation. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful shit. Canadian ghoul. <laughs> R.I.P. Paul Ritchie stuffed into the cat vent by a My Buddy doll after running out of continues. Wow, so many references. Lumo Nuva. J.W. Uh, Jesus wept. <laughs> yep, not, yep, there's no Dota character. Brian Udaf. L.O.D. A tall glass of dumb bitch juice. Ooh. Ooh. Sterner stock. Psychosis. Nowhere, Lucas. Kyle Welch. Clint Deerking. Brian Stero. Agents Miskatonic. Cool. Ooh. CL Reagan. Brian Sika. Justin. And welcome to the new names in our book of <laughs> names. Shine us. Climb right on out of the cat vent, Jessica Nicole. You're in the <laughs> book of names now. Yet you best start believing in stories, Jaybird. You're in the book now, Jaybird. I already said your name. <laughs> and welcome, Ben Foyos Say. How did Foy- you? Floyos. How Floy- the hell Floy- did you know okay. how to say that? Floyos. It was, I Please message the, us. I missed the L in the. You the said it with three. such conviction, I believed that that's how that word was. Yeah. So. Uh, it, uh, it's, uh, well, it's immortalized in the book of names now. All right. Well, I'll do better next time. Thank you all so very, very much for your love. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.